Hey everyone, welcome back to Miami. Lisa Martin here, live with theCUBE at IFS Unleashed 2022. We're so excited to be here. We just had a great conversation with IFS's CEO, Darren Roos. Now we've got another exciting conversation. F1 is here, you know how much I love F1. Christian Peterson joins us as well, the Chief Product Officer at IFS, and Sean Ed Edwards, IT business partner at Aston Martin F1. Guys, it's great to have you on the program. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. I, we were talking about F1. We probably could have an entire conversation <laughs> just on that. Um, but Christian, I want to talk with you. It's been three years since theCUBE has covered IFS, obviously, for obvious reasons. During that time, so much momentum has happened. IFS Cloud was launched about 18 months ago. Give our audience an, a flavor of IFS Cloud and some of the milestones that you've hit in such a short time period. Yeah, I mean, IFS Cloud is really transformational in many ways. It's transformational for, first and foremost, for our customers in what enables them to do, but also transformational for us from a technology perspective, how we work and how we do everything. Um, and at the end of the day, it has really surfaced, uh, served around the, the, the fact of what we need to do for our customers. And what we saw our customers often do back then uh, or any company, was they were out looking for ERP solutions, or FSM solutions, or EAM solutions, or what have you. And then they were trying to stitch it all together. Um, and we, we said like, hang on a second, these, these traditional software categories, those are some that I'm guilty. You know, there's some that we actually invented over the years together with analysts. So we invented ERP, and we invented CRM, and EAM, and all these different things. But at the end of the day, Customers really want a solution to what they are, they are de what they're dealing with, and so in these conversations, it became very clear that, and very um, repeated conclusions from the conversations that customers wanted something that could manage and help them optimize the use of their assets, regardless of what industry you're in. Assets is such a key component. Either you are using your assets or you're producing assets. Uh, second thing is really get the best use of, of your people, your teams and your crew? How do you get the right people on the right job at the same time? How do you assemble the right crew with the right set of skills in the crew, get them to the right people at the same time? So, uh, and then the final thing is of course, customers. You know, all the things that you need to do to get customers to answer this ultimate questions. Will you buy from this company again? And they should say yes. <laughs> That's the ultimate results of moments of service. So that's how we bring it all together and that's what we have been fast at work at. That's what IFS Cloud is all about. And you, you talked about IFS Cloud being able to, to help customers orchestrate assets, people, customers, Aston Martin being one of those customers. Shana, you came from IFS, so you have kind of the backstory, but just give the audience a little bit of a flavor of your role at Aston Martin, and then let's dig into the smart factory. Sure, so I um, previously worked at IFS as a manufacturing consultant, so my bread and butter is um, production planning in the ERP sector. Um, so we, I, um, Aston Martin didn't have an ERP system pre-IFS or a legacy system that wasn't working for them and the team couldn't rely upon it. So what we did was bring IFS in. I was the consultant there and as IFS always preached, customer first, well, customer first did come and I jumped in to support the team. Um, so we've implemented a full ERP solution to manage the production control and the material traceability all the way through from design until delivery to track. And we've more, most recently implemented a warehouse solution at track side as well. So we're now tracking our parts going out of the garage. So that's a really exciting time for IFS. In terms of the smart factory, it's not built yet. We're, we're supposed to move um, next year. So that's really exciting because we're quadrupling our footprint. So going from it's quite a small factory spread out across um, the Northamptonshire countryside. We're going into one place, quadrupling our footprint. And what we're going to start looking at is using the technology we're implementing there, so enabling 5G to springboard our IFS implementations going forward with the likes of Internet of Things to connect our 15 brand new CNC machines, but also things like um, RFID. So that comes with its own challenges on a Formula One car, but it's all about speed of data capture, single point of truth, and IFS provides that. And, and well, Formula One, the first word that comes to mind is speed. Absolutely. Second word is crazy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very unique in terms of most customers Christian deals with, they're about speed but also about profit and efficiency. That doesn't matter to us, it is all about time. Time is our currency and if we go quicker, 
in designing and manufacturing, which IFS supports, ultimately the car goes quicker, so speed is everything. And, and if, we, if we think of, of uh, people, uh, customers, and assets at Aston Martin F1, I can't, I can't imagine the quantity of assets Absolutely. that you're building every race weekend and refactoring. Absolutely, so a Formula One car that drives out of the garage is made up of 13,000 car parts, um, most of which, 50% of which we've made in-house. So we have to track that all the way through from the smallest metallic component all the way up to the most complex assembly. So orchestrating that and having a single point of truth for people to look at and track is what IFS has provided us. Christian, elaborate on that a little bit in terms of I mean, what you're facilitating, F1 is such a great example of, of speed we talked about, but the fact that you're setting up the car every, every other weekend, maybe sometimes back-to-back -back weeks, so many massive changes going on. You mentioned 50% of those 13,000 parts you manufacture. Absolutely. Talk about IFS as being a catalyst for that. I mean, the, it's, it's fascinating with Formula One for, because as a technology geek like me, it's really just any other business on steroids. I mean, we talk, we talk about Absolutely. this high-tech, super high-tech manufacturing, but even, even before that, the design that goes in with CFDs and how you optimize for different things and new simulation software for these things, goes into manufacturing, goes into wind tunnels, and then goes on track. But guess what, when it's on track, it's an asset. It's an asset that streams from, how many sensors are on the car? I think it's over 10,000 sensors. Over 10,000 sensors that streams maybe at 50 hertz, so 50 readings. So every lap you just get this mountain of data, which is really IoT. So I always say like F1, F1 did IoT before anybody invented <laughs> the term. Yep. Yep. You know, F1 did machine learning and AI before anybody thought about it in terms of pattern recognition and things like that with the data. So that's why it's fascinating to work with an organization like that. It's the it's the sophistication around the technologies and then the pace of what they do. It's not that what they do is actually so different. It's it isn't, it absolutely isn't. We just have to do it really quickly. Really quickly, <laughs> right? And the same thing when you talk about parts. I mean, I was fascinated of a conversation with, with one of your designers that says that, you know, sometimes we, we are designing a part and this, the car is now ready for production, but the previous version of that part has not even been deployed on the car yet. So that's how quick the innovation comes through, and it's, it's, it's fascinating, and that's why we like the challenge that Aston Martin gives us, because if we can, if we can address worry, that, yeah. there's a lot of businesses we can make happy with that as well. So Shana, talk a little bit about this is, so we're coming up, there's what, four races left in the 2022 season, but this is your busy time, because that new car, the uh, 23 car, it needs to be debuted in what, February? So just a few months time? Absolutely, so it's a bit counterintuitive, so our busiest time is now, we're ramping up into it. So we, co we go into something called car build, which is from December to, December to February, which is our end point, and there's no moving that point. The car has got to go around that track in February. So we have got to make those 13,000 components. We've got to design them, we've got to make them, and then we've got to get them to the car in February for our moment of service. I said it on stage, our moment of service as a manufacturing company is that car going around the track, and we have to do it 24 times next year, and we've got to start well, otherwise we're not going to keep up. I was going to ask you what a what a moment what's a moment of service in F1 and you're saying basically getting that Absolutely. functional car on the track quickly a, as quickly as possible and being able to have the technology underpinning that's really abstracting the complexity. Absolutely. So I would say our customer ultimately is the driver and the fans. They they need to have a fast car so they can support it and they ultimately drive it around the track and go get first place and be competitive. So that is our moment of service to our drivers is to deliver that car. 24 times next year. I imagine they might be a little demanding. They are, and Just I think it's going to be exciting with Alonso coming in, because new agree. driver, we've got to manage that change, and he'll have new things that he wants to try out on a car, so that adds another level of complexity to that. Well, how influential are the drivers in terms of some of the, the manufacturing? Like, did they, are they, give me kind of a, a sense of how Alonso, Fernando Alonso, your team, and IFS maybe collaborate maybe not directly, but. So Alonso will come in and suggest that he wants cars to work a certain way, so he will feed back to the team in terms of, oh, we need this car We need this car part to do this and this car part to do that. So then we're in a cycle when he first gets into the car in that February, we've then got to turn around car parts based off his suggestions. So we need to do that again really quickly and that's where IFS feeds in. So we have to have the release 
and then the manufacturer of the component completely integrated and that's what we achieve with IFS. And it needs to be really seamless. Absolutely, if, if we don't get it right, that car doesn't go out of track, so there's no moving deadline. Right, that's the, probably one of the industries where deadlines do not move. Absolutely. We're so used to things happening in tech where things shift and change and reorgs, but this is one where the dates are set and they're firm. Absolutely, and we have to do anything we can do to get that car on the track, so yeah, it doesn't move. Christian, talk about the partnership a little bit from your standpoint in terms of how influential has Aston Martin F1 been in IFS Cloud in its first 18 months? I was looking at some stats that you've already gotten 400,000 plus users in just a short time period. How influential are your customers in the direction and even the, uh, the next launch, uh, 22R2? I mean, our customers are everything. Plain and simple, that's, that's what it is. And we have, we have a partnership. I think about every single customer as a partner of ours Absolutely. and we are partnering in taking technology to the next level in terms of, of the outputs and the benefits it can create for our customers. That's what it's all, all about. And I, I always think about these, these three elements. I think I mentioned them in our state as well. I think the partnership we have is a partnership around innovation. Innovation doesn't only come from IFS or the technology partner. It comes from discussions, requirements, opportunities, what if, like all these things. So innovation comes from everywhere. There's technology driven innovation, there's customer driven innovation, but that's part of the partnership. The second part of the partnership is inspiration. So with innovation, you inspire. So when you innovate on something new, that inspires new innovation and new thinking. And that's again, the second part of the partnership. And then the third part is really iterate and execute, right? Because it's great that we can now innovate and we can agree on what we need to do, but now we need to put it into products, put it into technology and put it into actual use. That's when the benefits comes and that's when we can start ringing the bell. And I think it's really intrinsically linked. I mean, if you look at um, progress with Formula One teams and their innovation, it, it's all underpinned by our technology partners yeah. and that's why it's so important the likes of Christian pushes the product and improves it and innovates it because then we can realize the benefits and ultimately save time and go faster. So it's really important that our, our partners and certainly in Formula One push the boundaries and find yeah. that technology. And I think one of the things that we also find very, very important is that we actually understand our customers and can talk the language. So I think that was one of the key things in Absolutely. our engagement with Aston Martin from the beginning is that we had a set of people that really understand Formula One, felt it on their bodies and can have the conversation. So when the Formula One teams, they say something, then we actually understand what we're talking about. So for instance, when we talk about, you know, um, trackside inventory, well, it's not that different from what a field service technician have in his van when he goes service. The only difference here is when you see something happening on track, you'll see the parts manager go out to the pit lane with a tablet and say like, oh, we need this, we need that, we need this and we need that. And then they'll go back and pick it and put it on the car and the car is serviced and maintained and off Absolutely. you go. Yeah. yeah, that speed always impresses me. <laughs> it's My unbelievable. Shannon, last question for you. From a smart factory perspective, you said you're moving in next year. What are some of the things that you're excited about that you think are really going to be transformative with what IFS is doing? So I think what I'm really excited about once we get in is using the technology they've already put in terms of 5G networks to sort of springboard that into a further IFS implementation, maybe IFS cloud, in terms of we always struggle to keep the system up to date with with what's physically happening, so that the less data entry and the more automatic sort of data capture, the better it is for the Formula One team, because we improve our, our single point of truth. So I'm really excited to look at the Internet of Things and sort of um, integrate our CNC machines to sort of feed that information back into yeah. IFS, but also the RFID technology, I think is going to be a game changer when we go into the new factory, so really excited. Excellent, well, well done this Thank year. You. We look forward to seeing Alonso join the team in 23. Fingers crossed. They, okay, fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> Christian, Shanette, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank, Thank you, you so much for sharing your insights and how IFS, Aston Martin are working together, how you're really synergistically working together. We yeah. appreciate your time. Thank, you very, Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks pleasure. for having us and uh, go Aston. Woo, go Aston. <laughs> you heard it here first. Lisa Martin, no relation to Aston Martin, but I want to thank Christian Peterson and Shannon Edwards for joining me talking about IFS and Aston Martin team and what they're doing at speed and scale. Stick around, my next guest joins me in a minute. Thank you.